Hello everybody, this is Miss Bender and I am making a video for my lab um, to point out the endocrine system and the hormones and go over your beginning parts of your lab list. So the first model we're going to look at is our lovely torso model here. The Paulding campus has named this gentleman here Leslie, so that is what I casually refer to him as. And the first thing we're going to do with Leslie is take a peep at his brain. Right. So I have a few of your nervous system models here to look at. This one that's falling apart is what I just took out of Leslie. Um, we can see how it would fit together just like that. Right. And we can see here that you have this lovely middle section that you went over from your nervous system, that would be your hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus is the part of you that translates between your nervous system and your endocrine system. So it translates between nerve electrical impulses and chemical hormonal impulses. And it makes the two hormones oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. Oxytocin is the hormone that makes you feel love. Antidiuretic hormone is the hormone that makes you hold on to your water and not have to use the restroom. Dangling off the front end of your hypothalamus on your nervous system model of the whole brain it is this ball that is dangly here. Right. So we can see that little dangling ball. I believe on your nervous system models from ANP1, it is numbered as number 25. And on Leslie, it is this part of the brain that just kind of dangles and sticks out here. That is the pituitary gland. We're going to cut over to a different close-up of your pituitary from this model that is a number of your glands in your system for the endocrine system. And your pituitary gland has a front lobe and a back lobe. Yes, I know that it looks like a pair of testicles. They are sideways set within your body instead of frontal facing. Um, that's kind of appropriate because your anterior pituitary makes some hormones that have to do with puberty. So feel free to think about that if you need an analogy. Each of these lobes has a different name. The side that has more nervous system input that is closer in tissue sample to the hypothalamus up here is the posterior pituitary and it also makes oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. Some textbooks will tell you that it synthesizes them, like our OpenStax textbook and the PowerPoint from there. Others, like your lab manual, will tell you that it only stores what the hypothalamus makes. For the purposes of this class, I just want you to associate oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone with your posterior pituitary here, or your neurohypothesis if you want to get fancy. The front lobe is your anterior pituitary. The anterior pituitary makes six hormones that you guys have to know about. Four of them are tropic hormones. That means that they travel to other organs in the body and tell other glands to make different hormones to do their jobs. And those tropic hormones are luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, both of which travel either to the testes or the ovaries. So that would be the testes or the ovaries to stimulate follicles to grow. That means make sperm or eggs and also stop follicles from growing, which is what luteinizing hormone does. It tells your body, hey, we've made enough eggs or sperm. The other two hormones 
that your anterior pituitary will make that are tropic hormones. Our thyroid stimulating hormone, which travels to your thyroid gland and tells your thyroid gland to pick up the pace on controlling your metabolism. And adrenocorticotropic hormone, which travels to your adrenal glands and tells them to pick up the pace on what they do. The two non-tropic hormones that your anterior pituitary will make are prolactin, which is the hormone that will cause you to lactate or create milk, and growth hormone, which obviously you make more of as a tiny child because you need to grow up big and strong. Adults still do make a little bit of growth hormone. You have to have it so your cells can heal and repair damages, but you make more of it as a kid. Right. So that would be your pituitary. The other hormone you need to know that is also back here in your brain So behind the pituitary, behind your hypothalamus, you have a tiny itty bitty little hormone right here. On your other model, specifically from the nervous system, it is this itty bitty little thing labeled number 23 right here. That is your pineal gland. Your pineal gland's only job is to control your circadian rhythm so when you're awake and when you're sleepy and it's it makes melatonin which is the hormone that will make you sleepy when the lights are off and that is what your pineal gland does the next gland on our list is called the thyroid gland so your thyroid is this gland right here that is wrapped around your trachea or windpipe just underneath your voice box on your throat. So this is your thyroid gland. Right. You will find this not only on most base models like Leslie, but on almost every single one of the respiratory system models that the school has because the thyroid sits here and happily wraps around your voice box. It is also over here twice on your plaque of glands where you have thyroid gland once again wrapped around your trachea. Un this is your trachea underneath your voice box. And then this would be the back of your trachea and the sides of your thyroid gland because your thyroid gland is just like a butterfly that wraps around, right? Your thyroid gland is responsible for your metabolism and it creates thyroid hormone. So it will create thyroid hormone. No one was creative when it named that. Thyroid gland makes thyroid hormone. On the back wings of your thyroid gland, you have four itty bitty little dots. These are each called your parathyroid glands. Your parathyroid glands make parathyroid hormone. Once again, no one was creative when they thought of that name. Okay. The next gland that you guys, that is on your lab list, is a gland that is normally located behind your breastbone here. I have never actually seen it on any models on campus. It is called your thymus, and we will talk about your thymus more when we discuss your immune system. Your thymus gland makes a, a hormone called thymosin. So once again, your thymus makes thymosin. The next hormone, or glands down on your list are your adrenal glands. Your adrenal glands look like little triangle paper folded hats that happily sit on top of your kidneys. And just like with the thyroid gland, I can also pull any of our models from our urinary system, 
see here we have a kidney model and it too has the adrenal gland on top of it this is a full model here of your urinary system you have the kidneys ureters going down to the bladder here but once again you have the thyroid or your adrenal glands sitting here happily on top of your kidneys right we will get more into your adrenal glands when i make my video about histology but your adrenal glands make a number of hormones and the hormones they make deter are determined by the layer of the adrenal gland that made the hormone to list your hormones that are made from the adrenal glands the middle or medulla of the adrenal gland makes epinephrine or norepinephrine that's your adrenaline that's your fight or flight response um the outer layer will make mineral corticoids like aldosterone that control your blood pressure the middle layer will make glucocorticoids like cortisol that relieve itching and swollen stretched behavior and then the inner part that is not quite the middle but next to the middle make gonadocorticoids which are androgens and estrogens those are hormones that will become sex hormones androgens are sex hormones that can switch and grow into either estrogen or testosterones to give your body what you need depending upon what gender you are right. that leaves us with three hormones that we have to or three glands that we still have to go over on leslie sitting on top here curled up what would un be underneath the stomach here you have the pancreas you can find the pancreas on any of the classrooms digestive system models as well but your pancreas has two full-time jobs and it works full-time for both your endocrine system and your digestive system and your pancreas is going to make insulin and glucagon one of those causes your blood sugar levels to go up by breaking down some fat that would be glucagon insulin is what makes your cells take in glucose for use and to make energy you guys probably have heard a great deal about insulin in your pancreas because diabetes is a prevalent problem in the united states other than your pancreas the last two organs we need to discuss right now leslie here is a gentleman right but leslie's genitals can pop in and out there are both male and female versions and literally we can change him right now he is a man meaning he has testes here testes are a gland that men have or males have that produce the hormone testosterone looking over at your large sheet model again we have a close-up of a testicle here once again males have testicles and they make testosterone the flip side of that would be females in which you see the full reproductive system set up here women much like men have two testes ladies or females have two ovaries ovaries for females make estrogen and progesterone those are our two sex hormones so we have estrogen and progesterone on a female leslie model here we can pop out her organs and in looking in we can see her open uterus here curving around following the fallopian tubes to right here where you can see on the leslie models this yellow gland right here is her ovary right. and that is a tour of the glands of your 
endocrine system and the hormones that they create on your lab list. I will give you guys a second video going over histology in the histology PowerPoint that I've given you guys. Have a wonderful evening.